What's going on? Hey. Happy Howdy. Friday night to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. It's good to see everyone again for our favorite time of the week. Um, if it's your first time joining us tonight, we are glad you have jumped in with us. Make yourself at home in the community. Hit that like button, the subscribe button on whatever channel you're watching it from, so that and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified each and every time we put out more content or go live to come hang out with you guys. How is everybody doing tonight? Doing good. I'm doing wonderful. Wonderful. I'm doing great. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh Kip, like I feel like I just saw you, man. Yeah, you just seen me not too long ago, dude. I was live like <laughs> I was live like an hour ago. And then I've been cutting up in here with y'all for the past 15 minutes before we went live. Oh man, yeah. We've been having some good conversation. If the, if if everybody heard the stuff that went on before we went live, they they'd they'd have their entertainment feel before the show got started. <laughs> it's good stuff right hey how you doing tonight dave man you doing all right man how you hold it holding it down and... yeah i'm doing really well uh been a busy week but uh yeah keeping it together and enjoying what i'm uh enjoying what i'm doing now enjoying talking to more people right. um who are doing carnivore and yeah life's good yeah Ab absolutely good stuff yeah how's Wait. things with you larry Things are good, feeling good. Cassie and I are back on track, solid. I mean, we're over two weeks now eating clean. And that was a big deal for us for a little while. Just weren't feeling 100% kind of down on ourselves. So feeling really good. Been a busy week. Um, did a lot of filming. And uh, yeah, it's really good to be here. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, you know, time for the weekend. So glad you're here, no matter what channel you're on. And uh, I'm looking forward to this, as always. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody who has a question, as always, if you'll just put a Q by it in the chat, we will get to you. And uh, good to see everybody. How's everybody else doing? Everybody in the chat, if you can just comment where you're from, how you doing, what kind of week you had, all this, all the things. Uh, it's good to see everybody. Yeah. Oh, really good. So, uh, Sean, what have you been up to this week? How's your week been? Oh man, I have been going nonstop. It's it's been good though, man. Like you know, I have been doing a lot of studying. I haven't been as active in even in the group or you know even on the channel. Uh, obviously, the video that you and I put out together, um, it is doing well. I thought it was some pretty good stuff. I hope everybody liked that. But other than that, man, like. I just been doing a lot of studying and getting ready for this cold weather that's coming in, man. It's it's the weather has dropped off here in South Carolina. It is winter time, and apparently I have misplaced my insulation over the last year and a half. So <laughs> <laughs> you misplaced all your jackets too, because I got a couple jackets of yours that I'm wearing now. <laughs> I know, right? Well, and I had planned on uh, just. I'm the world's worst about just keeping stuff long after it should be gone. If you ask my wife, I can assure you, she will tell you that I have lots of things that should have found its way to another home a long time ago. Um, the problem is I have not replaced said jackets and now it's time for cold weather and I'm outside trying to do the walking thing or, you know, whatever it is cold. So, um, that is something that's going to have to be rectified quickly. <laughs> so I want to say, I saw your guys' video. It was really good. It was a great conversation. Uh, you and Dave had, I really enjoyed that. And, uh, I got to say congratulations to Kip for completing his five day challenge. He did awesome. And, it, you know, it seems like you're back on track too, my friend. That's, that's really good to see. Absolutely. I need to do like a, I need to do like a instead of a five day challenge. I just need to do that all year long because yeah. that like it's hard to cheat whenever uh, whenever you're having to film everything that you're doing. It helps you stay on track for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's that's one of the things about being involved in community, man. If if you inundate yourself, you know, if you're idle hands is devil playground, right? Ain't that, ain't that the saying? I mean, if, if you give yourself enough time, you're going to, you're going to find any of us. Uh, I'm not saying you, I'm saying me, you know, 
give yourself enough time, you will wander off into the habits that you have formed. And until you break those habits, man, like that can be a, a weird place to be. I feel like. For sure. Oh, definitely. We had a question. Uh, oh, uh, what time was it? There's one at eight Oh three. Yeah. Eight Oh three. I'm going to grab this. Gina, thanks for the super chat. She said, doing great. You guys are some of my favorite carnivores. I really miss the video. Of you. Uh, I rarely miss the video you guys do. Thank you for all you guys do. You guys keep me going. Thank you, Gina. We appreciate you Thanks, guys. Keep Anna. us going. We appreciate you guys and, and, and all that you guys do for us. You know, the, the you know, from the donations to showing up to hitting that like button, to just commenting and encouraging us, man, it, it really does go a long way. You know, we're on the journey just like everybody else, each one of us. And, you know, so it's definitely good to get that interaction. Thank you. And somebody picked up a, uh, a, a, a YouTube member. Thanks, Doubting Thomas. Appreciate yeah, thanks. that. Thanks, Tom. Right on. This, uh, now let me get in here and find this. You said at what, 903? Uh, yeah, there's another one. Uh, there's another one there at the same time from Anne Violicki. It's before, uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, 903, Anne Bielecki, and 903, Pam. Gennaro. Okay, cool. Gennari. And says, how do I get others on board with carnivore? I'm a, a lone meat eater. Um, That's a very good question. And so that's that's what most of us are trying to do too. Larry, what, what's your advice, man? You've probably been, uh, been on this journey the longest out of everybody, I feel like. So what? Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't have a whole lot of people in our lives that are really uh, overweight, like extended family and stuff. But there are a few. And Cassie's a little more vocal than I am. Uh, she'll just, you know, come right out and say it, uh, you know, and have a good conversation with them about it and tell them the benefits. But I always say, let's just show by example. You know, let's just eat the diet and everybody will see what happens. And if they're interested, they're interested. But you know, it's a, uh, it's something we really never focused on, you know, trying to get people cause we had each other, you know, we're both doing the diet together. So, but yeah, I've always said just, you know, uh, show by example, Dave, you got any thoughts on that, man? Yeah. I'm very similar. Yeah. I, I, I found just lead by example. Cause if, um, it's very hard to get people on board unless they're ready. You know, you just um, you end up coming off as just this crazy, crazy person, the crazy meat person. So, um, you know, just lead by example. If people ask questions about it, tell answer the questions and, and be honest about it. Say, look, this is what what it's doing for me. This is how it's helping me. But, you know, um, kind of don't expect that anything's going to come of it because most people are going to go. Yeah, but I couldn't do that and then walk away. So, yeah. Kip, any thoughts? Just, just tell them straight up. Just look them in the eyes and say, "Do it, or are you gonna die?" No, don't tell them that for real. Just, <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just the best thing you could do for real is just be the example, like y'all said. Like the best thing you can do for anybody is be the example. You can't just beat stuff into people. You, I mean, if people ask. You can give them recommendations and tell them stuff. But if you can be the best example that you can be, like, because this is this living this lifestyle, it will transform your health and it will heal your body in amazing ways. Mm -hmm. And people will see that. Like, people will see that in time. They might not see it in three months or six months, but like a year later or two years later, they're going to, if you stick with it, they're going to see the transformation. And people will get curious. So you just be the very best example that you can be. And people are going to slowly start asking questions. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. People people aren't going to change until not changing is a less comfortable option is, you know, the way I've always heard it put. I, lo I like the way that yeah. it's stated, you know, and j just like us, you know. And even myself, you know, people have seen my family. A, a lot of the people in my family started eating this way, not because I was proselytizing them or, you know, trying to convert, get them converted over to carnivores, so to speak, uh, from, 
they just saw what how it was affecting me and how good I felt. And I, I was so focused on changing me that the off the offshoots and, and the in the product of that is, you know, something that, that people definitely see, notice and, and want a part of. So Yeah, I, I and there's a lot of parallels. Um like when I when I came to Jesus Christ, you know, I got saved and you, you, at first you're really excited and you want to tell the world, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I would share my faith with everybody. And it's like, I, I, I learned, you know, over like three, four years being in the workforce, just like, you know, <sighs> lead by example, you know, you can't mm-hmm. shove it down people's throats. And as I matured as a Christian, I realized that. And I, I really saw a lot of parallels there with carnivore. You know, and so I was a little more wise when I started Carnivore. Just, you know, don't shove it down their throats. Just lead by example. And if they're mm-hmm. curious or interested, you know, boy, he's looking a, a lot healthier. We're like when I became a Christian, mm-hmm. man, he's always in a good mood, always joyful. You know, what's going on with him? So then they start asking questions. So an example is a, a powerful thing. So I hope that helps. Larry, mm-hmm. I'd like to add to what you're saying, too. Like that made me think of something. Uh, that like, you know, we all in the carnivore community, we all like steak, right? We all, everybody loves steak and talks about steak all the time. I love it, but I wouldn't like it if you were slapping me upside the face with it. <laughs> so if you just keep slapping people upside the face with stuff, you know what I mean? If you just back, backhand them with a brisket, it's not going to be as appetizing. Yeah. But if you just keep cooking it and letting that aroma just uh, mm. let them smell that aroma and let them see you eat that awesome food. And you just keep living it and being the example. Eventually, they'll get hungry and want to know more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy. Sure. Oh, so, hey, backhanding them with brisket, huh? That's what's up. <laughs> I, 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 it makes me think about the fish slapping dance on Monty Python. I'm just imagining the brisket <laughs> slapping dance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's that's good stuff. Uh, Pam Pam says, "Do you eat butter, fatty meats, etc?" Absolutely, absolutely. I I eat butter by itself without fatty meat. Sometimes depends on what time it is. What about you guys, Kip? You you eat the you eat you eat plenty of butter. I mean, that's mostly what all of us eat, right? Yeah, I love butter. I would say I eat more tallow than I do butter. But I do love butter on top of a steak. I don't like to cook with it like a lot of people do. I like to put it on top of stuff once it's done cooking and let it kind of melt. But I like to cook in tallow a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with Kip. Uh, I cook in tallow or bacon grease, and I love butter on top of everything, pretty much everything. You know, I'll put a little butter on, whether it's steak, chuck roast, eggs, you know, so... For sure, um, Dave. I love butter, um, but I'm trying. I, I'm trying not to have too much of it right at the moment because it leads to excessive bathroom activity. So, um, I'm like when I cook now, I'm I'm cooking my. I'm I I wouldn't used to do like eggs first, and I'd cook that in tallow or butter or lard or something, and then I'd do ground beef next. What I'm doing now is I'm doing the ground beef. And I'm not cooking in anything. I'm just cooking it in its own fat. And mm-hmm. then the rendered fat that's left, that's what I cook the eggs in. And, yeah. But I, I love butter. I just, at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm reducing the amount I have. Yeah. Sean? Yeah. yeah. I, take the, I take those turns, too. Sometimes I'll, I'll cut it out and won't have it. Sometimes, depending on what I'm eating. Um, I had some fillets today, actually, and instead of ribeye. So, because it it doesn't have all the the fattest content in it, I will add more butter than I normally would to that, just because I'm trying to get the 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 fat content up. So, because I, I I just feel better, can you know, especially now that I don't have as much fat on my body. Um, I do add a, you know, I I try to be conscientious about that because I know that's where my energy is coming from. Mm. Oh, bold carnivore. How fast is Kip running? I don't know. How fast are you running, Kip? You got your fast shoes on or what? Well, I mean, it depends. Are we, are we running from the police or where are we, where are we going? <laughs> I mean, 
Like I will if 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 there's like wolves after us, I'm I don't I don't run very fast, but I will outrun y'all because I'll trip y'all up. But I don't I don't really I mean when I run in my videos, I just kind of do a lot jog. I'm not doing a full out sprint. So don't think that I'm like, you know, uh trying to be the fastest runner in the world. I don't do that. Got your fast shoes on. You see me running from a bear, like listen, <laughs> try to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ray says, Larry, who's the guy on y'all's channel that massively lost all that weight? That it was insane. Uh, that was that dude up in your upper left corner. <laughs> uh, oh, are you talking about that reaches short? I put out that was Ken Denning. Uh, did you see that short, you guys? I did. You did okay. I, he might be talking mm -hmm. about Ken too. He was just a, a gentleman in our Facebook group, but then there was Sean. Yes, I don't, and I'm not sure, quite sure who you're referring to. Uh, they both done awesome. So, mm -hmm. Kent's killing it, man. Doing good. All right. Uh, yeah, he really is. Carrie says, "Question: If you are fasting, but you're also very hungry, what do you eat? What do you each of you do, or what are your tips in making it through a fast?" Uh, Larry, you got 14 days, man. Like that's, that's pretty impressive. I personally haven't fasted like that. So what, wh what did you do to get 14 days, man? Uh, well, the main thing when hunger pains are hitting you, I would use salt. You know, I put some salt, um, played and then walk through and, you know, lick my finger and dip it in the salt. It really helps um, with the hunger. You'll find that after four or five days, the hunger completely goes away. If you're going to do that long of a fast, um, it's pretty amazing. And that's when you just like get this totally total clarity come over your mind and your body and you just feel amazing. Um, but for me, day, day two and a half to day four was really rough. You get emotional, you kind of get depressed. It was a trip. Um, but yeah, I, I I would never do another fast that long again because when I did 14 days, Cassie did nine, and both of us craved everything again when we we're done with the fast. You know, so I now the max I probably do is maybe five days, but you know, I, I think for, for me three to four days, and then uh, you know that that's good. Dave, you done much fasting? I've done a couple of 48 hour fasts and didn't feel overly hungry on those but you know when i did get the slight oh i could be eating something now kind of feeling i'm just yeah some salt or or some black coffee or something like that and uh you can control hunger i think for on a short fast but i've never done something as long as 14 days that uh that is a big achievement uh, i'm not sure i could ever get there Keep, have I, you done I, any? I, I, oh, sorry, I just want, real quick, I just want to say I never thought Cassie would do nine days, you know. Right. But once she when she got past that threshold to where her hunger pains were gone, it, it gets really easy. It's really strange. So mm. go ahead, Kip. Yeah, I haven't done enough like fasting to to really talk too much about it. It's just amazing to see that some of y'all have done it for that amount of time or whatever. I think it's pretty cool and interesting, but like I just haven't done it, so I'm I, I can't really talk too much to it. What about you, Sean? Most of the fasting that I did, um, I, I purposefully did intermittent fasting. You know, not long after cutting the carnivore. You know, just coupling that with what I was eating. But it, I mean, it. I, I use I say purposefully, but like honestly, all the fasting that I've done has been supernatural because like I was, I was so full when I hit the wall of doom is whenever I started the intermittent fasting, because I knew that my body's full. Whenever you're full, you don't eat. Why force, you know, force it, you know? So that's whenever I started doing that. And even now, if I'm not hungry, I don't eat. I don't, there's not like a set time for me. I'm not eating breakfast at, you know, at five, you know, five or six and lunch at 12 and dinner at five or six. You know, I don't, I don't plan three meals a day. If I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm not, I don't like, I mean, it's not some arbitrary, you know, goals for nutrition throughout the day. My body is very 
efficient at letting me know whenever I need nutrition and I listen to it. And so when it tells me, you know, you're hungry, you need some nutrition, go get it. I, I listen I, and I give it to it. Um, you know, but as far as fasting, you know, I haven't, I haven't done a whole lot of extended fasting like that. I'd say the one positive thing I got out of that 14 day fast was now I know, like if I get a fast for a couple of days, like if I'm going somewhere and it, I know I can do that, no problem. You know, like a 48 hour fast is just like, I'm very confident, you know, cause there have been a couple of times Cassie and I've gone to an event or, and I've just decided not to eat, you know, I'm just, I'm fasting. I'm not going to eat. So it, it's, it's cool to know you can go without food, you know? Mm -hmm. So Anyway. I think well, about, I mean, and my mind works kind of crazy, y'all, but I think about like our ancestors and like if I could meet some of them, they probably think that like it would probably blow their mind that some of us like we fast because like and we have a choice and we do it just because where them they'd probably be like, dude, you know why we fasted? Because we couldn't find nothing to eat. Like they weren't <laughs> planning like, hey, I'm going to just not eat for a week or I'm going to not eat for 10 days. Like if they didn't look up and catch something, then they, they didn't have a choice. And so it's just crazy that now we're blessed enough that we can live in a time where we can just choose to take five days or 10 days off of eating or whatever, and then get back into it. For sure. And it, it, you know, it was really a trip to experience that you don't go without when you're without food for five or six days. Like I said, that clarity that comes over you and that energy, because if you were out in the wild and you didn't eat for that long, you know, you got to get up and go find food and your body's amazing. You know, you would mm -hmm. think you'd have no energy and you would just lay around, but our bodies aren't designed like that. You know, it's like, all right, red alert. You got to go get some food. So, I mean, you just feel great. The most surprising mm -hmm. thing for me was on like after the second night's sleep I'd had when I was fasting is just waking up so early with so much energy because my body's kind of telling me, okay, go and go and find some food now. It's, you know, you haven't eaten for a while. It's just a, such an amazing feeling. Right. Mm. Well, I mean, and, and a lot of the doctors talk about that, you know, I've heard Kilts, Dr. Kilts talk about that a good bit as far as like, we're continuously spiking, our, you know, our metabolism and our stomachs are consistently always full from birth to death, you know, and that's not how they were intended to be, you know, give your gut a break. You know, he does two five day fasts, you know, it sporadic, you know, throughout the year, um, you know, and it may, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, obviously there's a big difference between us doing it and our ancestors doing it. Our ancestors couldn't swing through the drive through or, you know, pick something up at the butcher shop. If they, if they miss a shot a little bit, you know, if they're off a little bit with their shot, they don't eat that night. There's a big difference, you know? So, I mean, and, and, but I mean, that does also indicate to us how we survive for all those years, you know, and it also tells me, pick your struggle. You know, we think we struggle whenever we have we live in one of the easiest societies, most advanced societies that's ever been on Earth. You know, there's so many things that we are we are privileged and, and privy to that generations before us would not even understand. You know, go back two thousand, four thousand years ago and tell our ancestors, "Oh man, swing through, you know, the drive through and get you some patties from off the a la carte menu," and they're like, "These people are crazy. Like, you can do that." You know, I mean, it's it's good problems to have, I guess. You know, yeah. Um, actually, I, I I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and someone was making the point, like even your great grandparents, if they were, if they came, you know, suddenly kind of transported to this day and age, they think they were in, you know, like a years in the future. Things have just changed mm -hmm. so much just in that short. A short number of generations. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, and two, we, we get wrapped up in this, like we think because we live a certain way that everybody lives a certain way too, though. There's, uh, there's places on earth. There's places in this state even that there people, I mean, yes, maybe you have access to the stuff, which makes a difference, 
But realistically, how many families are there living day to day without knowing where the m- meals are going to come from next week, man? You know, there, there a lot of people don't live the exact same way that we do. There's a lot of, you know, some of us are fortunate. Some of us are sh- not. Some of us struggle. So, I mean, it's definitely something to keep in mind. And that's why we try to emphasize, listen, you don't have to eat, you know, the A5 Wagyu, you know, whatever state for this to work. You eat what you can afford, you know. How's that, how's that go, Kit? Panda massaged? <laughs> yeah, that panda massage beef that people be trying to get. Uh, mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Sean's 100% correct. You know, don't have to do that. Uh, Julie says, any of you know if tomatoes are inflammatory, causing ridiculous arthritis flare up? Uh, what what did they class? I, it was it wasn't it tomatoes that are night? Was it night? Well, they're a nightshade, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So they're related to like pe- red peppers and all that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. red peppers and yellow peppers and all those kind of nightshades weren't good for me, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust tomatoes as far as I could throw them. Um, but what's your feeling, Larry? Uh, with well, my approach, like my diet overall, is you know I would see. I mean, if you're you know like doing keto or something, and you know, the best thing to do is just go go strict carnivore for thirty to sixty days, and then start reintroducing everything. Try those tomatoes and see if they cause a reaction in you like i i found i did that that very thing with cheese and it was like <laughs> proof positive that cheese causes inflammation in me personally but i had to experience that and kind of do the experiment you know so I, I tomatoes don't bother me at all i mean i don't consume i can't remember the last time i had tomato maybe we made some uh like carnivore nachos with pork rinds maybe a year ago or something, but I never had a problem with them. Um, Mm -hmm. Kip, you got any thoughts on that, man? Well, regardless of how tomatoes affect you, I just think they're disgusting. I've never, (laughs) I've I've never liked tomatoes to begin with. So, I mean, I used to love ketchup, but I know that ketchup's loaded with like sugar and stuff like that. I mean, I know there's brands (laughs) that like Cromwell kitchen that might make some better ketchup, but like, tomatoes in general like people used to put it on sandwiches and stuff uh-uh i'm out i ain't doing that really I, well you don't know, I have a you feeling, know what's good i got, I got a feeling you're testing your new stand-up routine out on us tonight <laughs> i promise you, I'm you, not. you've had you've had some banging comments tonight right <laughs> no look this is just me okay i promise <laughs> <laughs> dude you don't know you don't know what you're missing i grew up on uh, tomato sandwiches <laughs> no I mean, my no, family the, made fried green tomatoes and all that different stuff. And uh, I used to love fried food, but even when I tried a fried green tomato, it still was nasty. I just don't like tomatoes at all. <laughs> the issue that I had was every time, like, one thing was for sure, before carnivore, every single time I would have, like, a Papa John's pizza, I would I would have a gout flare up every single time. I love that pizza for whatever reason, and the only thing I could figure was the difference in the sauces, because I, I would get plain cheese, you know, with the salt, you know, heavy heavy sauce on it, and for whatever reason, even that, you know. So I don't know if it was the the type of sauce, the seasonings, or you know, whatever they have in. But I noticed that tomatoes, um, you know, would would do that issue. So. Oh. D said, "What what do your coworkers say about the way you eat? What is their reaction to your weight loss?" As far as me, I work remote, so I like it's just me here. My coworkers <laughs> love me; <laughs> they think it's amazing all the weight that I lost. What about you, Kip? You lost what a hundred? I did a hundred pounds. What yeah. what about you, man? Uh, it still blows their mind like what blows their mind is like whenever they're like yeah hey we're gonna have these cupcakes and all this other different stuff at work and i'm just like oh, i'm just gonna have some bacon like that really just blows mm. their mind but i mean they've kind of it gets to a point when you do it like you think that it weirds a lot of people out and it does at first a lot of people are like 
thrown off by it and they ask questions, but eventually people kind of stop asking questions and they get used to seeing it. And so now they don't really care. They know if we go to a restaurant, they're like, he's ordering a steak or he's going to get wings or something like that. They just know and they've got used to seeing it. So now it's not really that big of a deal. Anybody else? Larry, you got anything? Uh, when I, when I do gig, gig work and I'm solo, so I really don't have coworkers. Um, and then YouTube and everybody on YouTube's like, you know, I've, I've lost around a hundred pounds. I've been fluctuating between 98 and 102. And, uh, you know, I mean, I just recently saw my denturist. I mean, I'm getting my final dentures here pretty soon. I got two more appointments and he's blown away, you know, cause it's been a while since I seen him. You know, and he's just like, wow, you know, but and family members, too. It's always nice. You know, people, you know, notice the difference, you know, especially when you've been walking around kind of in shame for years. You know, you know, you're do- carrying around the extra weight. I mean, nobody likes to you know, feel that way, look that way. Um, and we get complacent with it, you know. And so, so it's, it is nice to hear when people notice. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, I see people that I work with, you know, a good bit and from before and, and they definitely notice, I mean, they know there's a huge difference. They're like, how in the world, like it's, you know, it's only been a year and a half, whatever, um, that I've been on this journey, but, um, I've been overweight my whole life as we were talking about before we went live, you know, you get used to living a certain way and people get used to seeing you a certain way. You don't look like the same person. That's the comment I probably get the most is like, I don't like, I I don't even recognize you. You know, you don't even look like the same person anymore. So my, I went and got my haircut in Simpson bill today. Boom. Check it out. Huh? (laughs) Anyway, I was talking to the hairdresser and we happened to be on talking about diet. And she said her parents were both diabetics. And I said, oh, and she 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 wasn't obese by any means. She maybe lose 10 pounds or whatever. I said, yeah, you want to keep that in check, you know. And I, we got on the subject of Carnivore Quest, and all meat diet. And she's, you know, like really intrigued. And I'm sitting there while she's cutting my hair on my thumb, looking for the thumbnail of your before and after, Sean. Because that's like the most extreme. <laughs> well, look at what this dude did, you know. And she was mm-hmm. blown away and she said she was going to have her folks look into it. And, you know, uh, thought I'd share that little story with you. It was pretty cool today. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I went, when I went and picked up my glasses, which I guess I can, you know, my, I had to get a new prescription because my eyes have gotten better apparently. And so I got my new prescription, my new glasses, I hope. I could see, um, but my prescript, my, my prescription is not as strong as it was before. And so that, you know, that's a blessing in and of itself. I was surprised. Cause I mean, I could tell that my eyes were a little bit different, but I didn't know how much better they were, you know? So now I'm 2030 30 and instead of 24, you know, I don't know what the number is. Honestly, I didn't even look, I just, they wrote the prescription and I got the glasses and I'm on about my way. That's but I told the story. Dude. That's incredible. It is. Like they probably don't hear many people walk in there and say, Hey, my eyes are getting better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, no. <laughs> wow. Well, and I told the woman when I went to the lady that whenever I went to pick my glasses up, she was talking, her little monitor was going off her, her, her CGM or whatever. Um, and I was like, your monitor's going off. I was like, you all right. And she's like, yeah, my, my sugar's, you know, out of whack. And I was like, type one or type two. And she's like, I'm a type one. I thought I was a type two, but apparently I'm a type one. And I was like, oh, man, you know, that that that's horrible. I was like, one thing that a lot of type one diabetics are seeing that they can regulate and um, their sugar a lot more consistently and come off of some of their insulin. Um, typically, their long dose insulin, not necessarily their short dose, but either way, any any little bit of help and, you know, you could get, I feel like it'd be the best. Um, and it, it just kind of popped out before even thinking about it. Like she didn't ask for my opinion. I just offered, you know, I was like, I had type two diabetes and I completely reversed it. My A1C went from right at seven to now last time I had it checked was 5.2. So, you know, you can definitely, the nutrition that you're putting in your body can benefit it a whole lot. I lost 270 pounds over about the last year and a half. And she looks at me and she's kind of like her head turned sideways and that's about where I left it because she didn't ask another question. 
And it's like, well, if you're not curious, I'm not going to go through the spill. You know, I've shared it so many times with people, you know, what we, what to do, like, and I'll share it with anybody, but you got to, yeah. if you're not interested enough to ask, I mean, yeah, I got to, I got to teach you what to do there. And here's what you say, pull out your phone. All right. Type up intentional cardboard. Now subscribe. <laughs> I, I very seldom ever go like, Hey, check me out on YouTube. I mean, I will tell people that, but I like, I like whenever I'm, you know, in the doctor's office or something, I like, I'm never going, I feel, I feel weird, man. Like do it, going there with it. I feel like, Hey, check me out, you know? Right. Um, right. which is cool, you know, but I don't know. There's so many te good testimonies from the type one diabetics. I had to at least say something, right? Absolutely. Oh, Ray says, did Sean do a 50 egg challenge? Laugh out loud. No, I didn't. I did not go get my eggs. Um, but maybe one day. <laughs> and I, I, I hit him up earlier today. I'm like, you doing it? <laughs> no, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick him up. Like, ah, I was looking for it. I know. Well, that, my buddy Steve, he, you know, Carnivlog channel, he uh, he sent me a message. He, he got a picture. He had a couple cartons of eggs himself. I think he was getting ready to do it, too. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not a, opposed to it. I just got to gotta do it, man. Right. And 50 eggs is a lot of eggs, man. I got to be – I can tell when I'm hungry, hungry. And there's a difference between I'm hungry, I can eat 50 eggs, and normal hunger for me, you know. Sometimes I just, like, I'll, if I get the hunger hunger, like, I will do about anything. I will go start eating sticks of butter until it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> What's really cool is I've seen multiple people in this live stream say that after you said that, Sean, that their eyesight has gotten better because of their diet. So that's just, that's incredible oh, nice. that that's actually mm -hmm. happening for so many people. Yeah, it is. I mean, what else what else can you do? Like how much how bi much bigger of an issue is our nutrition than what we've been led to believe? We we've been led to believe that a pill can help you or a surgery can help you, but why have why is it that so many, you know, so many issues can be reversed if not all issues? Um, with our nutrition, but that's the last thing you're going to hear if you go to your doctor. I mean, it's self-explanatory. I guess it's a rhetorical question, but... Because um, they want to keep us sick. Absolutely. I, I think the big thing in the future is a few years down the track is going to be the uh, the side effects and, and the problems coming from Ozempic. Uh, I just... Yeah... It's all fun and games now, and everyone's getting into it. And even in Hollywood and whatever, they're all getting into it. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen five, 10, 15 years down the track? You know, because they don't, they don't even know what's like what the mechanism is that makes it work, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be those commercials on TV that say, Call today if you try to zip it. We'll. Well, you got a case in, in court and all this other stuff. Cause we hear those commercials all the time about different things. And we'll probably hear those commercials about that stuff. Eventually. It, it'll either be that, or there'll be some new blockbuster drug that covers up the problems that Ozempic created. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. It'd be a money-making opportunity for someone. No. Things, what was it? I, I heard a quote, Jordan Peterson this week. He said something about we keep ourselves in the fog of life so we don't have to see and address the, the issue where we screwed up. And like, that's what I think about all those things that I tried, you know, despite I didn't know any better, you know, it was my responsibility to know how to, that, you know, how to change it. Like if you're out there listening to this and you're considering these ozipics and these Fetamine and all these shots and things like when I tell you that losing weight and getting healthy on carnivore was one of the most natural and easy things I had ever done. Like I cannot tell you how much money and time and effort I spent trying to get my health and weight to how it should be when the answer was so much easier than what I was given a testament to, you know? And there's so many people that even, you know, they come in here, they hear, they know, they, they know about this way of eating, but they just won't try it. And it's like, this can fix your issue, but you have to do it. You know, you have to do it. So I feel like, 
before you give your money, your time, your effort and everything else on some of those things that maybe it does help you lose a little weight. Maybe it does help you regain a little bit of your health. But as soon as you stop taking it, you're right back to where you are. Try carnivore, get your health under control, and you're going to start changing those habits and seeing how good you really can feel. And it'll make all the difference. I just feel like you got to go all out with carnivore if that's the thing you haven't really tried. But that stuff's so dangerous, man. Uh, Christine, where did the, where do you buy the majority of your meat? At the grocery store or from a local butcher or local rancher? Appreciate you guys. Larry, where you get most of your stuff at, man? Uh... You know, it's a mix for us. Our local grocery store, which is Food Lion, Costco on occasion, which we should do more often. And uh, our son, little Larry, he works at a butcher shop. But we don't get anything from a rancher other than eggs. Uh, we get fresh eggs um, sold locally from some farmers. and But that's it. Um, you know, a lot of that depends on your location and uh, what's available to you, you know. Uh, the butcher shop, we get a nice discount from our son. It's it's a high end store, so everything is rather expensive. So we don't get, you know, we maybe get twenty percent of our stuff from there, like quality ground beef, and you know. But <laughs> if you know, we're looking for sales at our local grocery store mainly. Um, you know, the weekend sales, um, holidays, pick up a bunch of holiday roast, freeze them. You know, so that time of year is coming up, guys. I'm really looking forward to that. You know, the holiday sales on uh, prime rib roast. And, mm, I just can't wait. What about you, Kip? Every now and then we get a little bit of like beef locally from, you know, um, a local area. But mainly it's because I live in a small town, so we don't have like fancy grocery stores, I call them. We just got like piggly wiggly and walmart and uh so uh i get stuff at those places like most weeks but like every now and then i'll make a drive like 45 minutes to an hour to go to where they have like a Publix or or even the butcher shop that i like to go to is like an hour away and i'll go there and get like some specialty cuts or whatever but most of my stuff just comes from the local grocery store or, or either Walmart or something like that. Like, it's not all fancy stuff. What about you, Dave? Yeah, but everything for me comes from the grocery store. So I, I, um, I don't really have... I've got a Costco near me, but it's near me as the crow flies. It's not easy to get to without a car. So, um, yeah, and I'm not a crow. So I don't go to Costco... <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, so just the, the grocery store supermarket for me, Sean, how about you? I go to, uh, a, a butcher shop basically, you know, right over in uh, basically the town over from where I've gone to the same place. I don't even go to the grocery store. I think I've been to the grocery store one time and it's because it, I, I got off work like extremely late one night and the butcher shop was pretty closed and I was out of meat and like, I couldn't, I couldn't bear the thought of, you know, um, having what we had here. So I was like, I, I'm going to stop at Ingles or something and get, you know, a couple steaks. And even after that, I was like, man, I got to get back to the butcher shop. I've gone to the same butcher shop over Anderson's in Powersville, um, South Carolina. My man, Anderson, he, he Rodney takes care of me. And, uh, that I've gone to the same place basically the whole time. It makes it easy. They know what I want, get the same thing every time. And, and I'm good to go. I'm not a, I'm not opposed to going to the grocery store if I have to, you know, but I just for the quality and the price it's just smart for me to go where I'm where I've been going. Let's see here. Here's a good one. Hey Kip, tell this man, tell this man, woman, whoever it is, person, any tips on quitting diet soda? It seems addictive. Well, what helped me to quit regular diet sodas initially was to start doing like the the flavored bubblies and things like that it was like a transition for me to transition to that which was like i mean it still has some like natural flavors and things like that which is 
I wouldn't say it for me. I don't think it's the best because it was kind of triggering some things, but for some people they can drink that stuff and it doesn't affect them at all. So, I mean, you might could try that for a little while and see like bubbly makes some sparkling waters, some uh, LaCroix. There's some other brands that make different ones, but I mean, you could also try just plain carbonated water. If you like that carbonation and you like soda, just try plain carbonated water because I think that'd be the best option is to get on that. That's what I do now. And um, when you start drinking it, like, I, at least for me, when I started drinking it, I started liking it. And now I love it. I drink it pretty much every day and I don't have a problem with it at all. And it's way better for you than drinking soda, even diet soda. I mean, a diet soda is better than a regular soda, but I still don't think a diet soda is very good for you. What about you, uh, Dave? So, yeah, pretty much the same, like sparkling water. Um, sparkling water helps me um, give up any kind of diet, soda, and also alcohol. Just that the carbonation, just um, it, it was enough of a replacement that over time I could get off all of it. How about you, Larry? Uh, yeah, same, same, same for me. Um, as a matter of fact, I had a little cup of tea, but I also have this here. It's, uh, you know, what Kip was talking about. It's got a few, you know, it's lime flavored, but there's no sweetener. I never had a problem with diet soda at all. I never really liked it. Um, so, so it was cool. You know, I, a lot of people struggle with diet soda and, you know, it's weird once, maybe twice a year, I'll crave something like a diet, uh, Sprite or something, something clear, but it's actually probably only like once a year. That's on a rare occasion. Um, I'll pick one up. I'm just in the mood for one, you know, but you know, like with any addiction, a good replacement is, is your best shot. And these guys gave it to you sparkling water. I dig it. Sean. Yeah, when I when I used to drink a two liter every single day. Is um, it was if you came into my house before Carnivore, before April the seventeenth, twenty twenty two, you would see a stack of two liter Dr. Peppers and over beside our table because I would drink a two liter about every single day. Rate regular, not diet. R regular yeah, diets, yeah. Do, uh, regular Dr. Pepper. Yeah, right. Um, you must have grew and, up rich, boy. I was drinking them Dr. Thunders. Dr. Thunder. Well, man, I didn't discriminate, man. I had Dr. Thunder and Dr. What is it? What is it? What is it? Dr. Oh, Mr. Pill. The Chex Cola. The Chex Cola. Chex thing. Cola. Yeah, man, I had all that stuff. But, uh, you know, yeah, if I if I had Cass, it was the regular Dr. Pepper because it had a whole lot more sugar or something in it. Um, <laughs> anyway, but the way that I stopped, I didn't even use the carbon. I didn't start drinking carbonated soda till this year. Um, the Topo Chico's kind of got me hooked. It to me, they tasted like a flat fountain drink, like when you get, don't get the syrup in your drink, and I, that's how I associated it in my head until this year. And I'm like, man, my taste has changed so much; it actually tastes good. So then I did start drinking them. But what I used was just regular water, and I went to and got me one of those bottles of real lemon juice, and I would just pour off a little lemon juice in there in the water to give it a little flavor. And that was what I used, um, originally until I just lightened up the load and did away with the lemon juice. I mean, you got to do what works, right? What's, what's stable to get you to where you got to be. <clears throat> and of course that stuff's going to be addictive, man. I mean, whether it's sugar or artificial sugar, the brain reacts the same, it light, it doesn't tell the difference. It lights up the same way. So, you know, this idea of we can have something that's sweet, but not sugar and not experience the consequences. That's wishful thinking and wishful thinking won't get you there. I mean, it were, is it better than sugar? I don't know. Cause it dumps insulin into your blood sugar and bottoms you out when you don't have an increase in your blood sugar. So it, maybe it's not even better. Maybe it's worse because it, bottoms your blood sugar out i don't know i think they're equally as dangerous in for whatever reason um is it better than a regular dr pepper i don't know it's arguable i guess <clears throat> carnivore brother Rhett, 
Can you talk about the benefits of fasting? I see so many people doing this, but really haven't considered it yet. I, as we talked about earlier, you know, most of us haven't done a whole lot of fasting, you know, as far as extended fasting, but I'm sure we all would have the same response, right? I mean, it's the autophage, the the mental clarity. Um, and, and the thing is, man, sometimes you do stuff like that just to see if you can, because in what world, in what life before carnivore would you ever have considered fasting? Like I wouldn't, I'll be the first one to tell you. I, I was thinking about the next meal every four hours. I wasn't thinking about not having meals for days. That's, that's the most insane thing I ever, I ever heard of, you know? Um, Dave, what about you? You, you said you did 48 hour fasting. Like what is what, What's the benefits you were trying to accomplish through that? Both times were just to see if I could do it um, and, you know, how I would feel. Um, and, you know, I, I you do feel, after an extended fast, you do feel good. But um, I, I think, yeah, as you said, one of, the, one of the biggest things that people would do fasting for is something like autophagy which is the cleanup of the dead cells and everything in your body. Your body's basically, you know, eating all the old stuff and whatever. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but supposedly that's good for weight loss. It's good for your skin. It's good for your brain. And, and yeah. And, um, uh, I think I've listened to different doctors talking about this and some doctors will say that you have to be fasting for like a minimum of 96 hours or something before you get autophagy. Some people will say it's, you've got to be 18 hours and then you'll go into autophagy. But either way, I think doing some level of fasting sometimes just does make you feel better. Yeah. Um, Kip, do you have any, or Larry, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I you you covered everything, Dave. Really, and I would recommend Dr. Jason Fung uh, for any fasting content on YouTube. Just check him out; uh, he's got some good stuff. So, but Dave, you you covered it one hundred percent. That's exactly why we did fasting when we did for autophagy, and you pretty much covered it. So, Kip, you got any uh, words there? I would just tell Carnivore Brothers that. Hey, man, you might have just came out for like a little challenge for yourself. Like nobody know, nobody's going to know what works the best for you like you. So just challenge yourself to do it for a little while and document it and write down how your results are. How do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Uh, are you losing weight? Are you having any issues? And if all goes well, then keep adding that into your routine if you want to and if you absolutely hate it, you never have to do it again. Just do it for yourself and see how it happens. See what see what happens. That's good stuff. Good stuff there, Kip. Less junk, more health. Ask a question for you, Larry. How much did Larry lose after 14 days and how much stayed off? Yeah. I lost 19 pounds in that 14 days and I gained all of it back plus a little. And <sighs> and rather quickly too. It was soon after we did that fast, Cassie started doing these recipes with uh, quite a bit of dairy in them. Um, I don't think they ever knocked us out of ketosis, but yeah, she, you know, when we do a recipe video and we shoot it, she'll have already made it three times to get it the way she wants it. And where does all that goodness go in our mouths, you know? And this was right after the fast. So <laughs> we rebounded pretty quick. And most of our subscribers told us you will gain half that weight back. Even if we like, you know, st started just eating meats, we would have gained some, there's a rebound effect, but we rebounded a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going through and seeing if I missed anything. Did y'all see anything I missed? Uh, somebody asked about liver. It was a while ago. Oh, yeah, right right there. Yeah. Do you eat liver? If not, do you take liver supplements? Also, I thought about carnivore, crisp, beef liver may be a feasible option, but I just can't eat cooked liver. I've done those carnivore, what is it, the um, no... Uh, 
it's like carnivore crisp or nose to tail. I do the no I have a thing for a discount code for nose to tail. Um, the the crisp I, that's the only liver that I've had. I haven't had any liver. I I don't I don't eat a bunch of liver stuff like that. Um, what about you guys? Yeah, I, we we have a link too, but I wouldn't. Yeah, the liver was too hard for me to chew. I couldn't. I just couldn't. I couldn't eat them. You know the, those chips. But we eat, we love liver after we started cooking it in bacon grease. You cook it up mm. in bacon grease and it, it really changed the whole experience. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you are, might give that a try, um, if not, you know, <laughs> there's always the supplements. Also, you can take liver, cut it up, and then patty it up with burger. You know, maybe put a quarter liver in one burger patty. Um, and that, that's a really way to get it in a really good way to get it in. I'll tell you, we really can tell the difference when we personally, both Cassie and I consume litter liver. We just, we feel a little bit better. You know, I mean, we have gone times where we've gone without it and it's kind of like, you know, out of sight, out of mind, you know, a couple months and then like, Oh, you know, I'll pick up some liver and man, we really feel the difference. So I highly recommend at least try and, to consume some, see what it does for you, Dave. Um, I I haven't eaten liver for nearly uh, what it would have been now, nearly thirty years. So um, knowingly, anyway. So I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, how I, about you? I, oh, would, I would say I would say the majority of carnivores don't consume liver that I talk to. Most people just don't like it. You know, I mean, there's a lot. I bet you it's like for my, the people I've interacted with, it's like 60, 40, you know, 60% mm -hmm. of people don't touch it. 40% of the people do. So go mm -hmm. ahead, Kip. Uh, the, the only way I used to eat liver before I started carnivore was uh, deep fried with battered in flour and everything. And uh, that's not cool on the carnivore diet. So now I, I don't really, I mean, I've tried a little bit. I've even tried the nose to tail stuff. It's just not something that I enjoy, so I don't do it. But, I mean, if if you can get it down and you can stomach it, then that's great. It's just not something that I use on a daily basis. But um, that's up to y'all. But uh, I'm going to hop off here for just a second, and I'll be right back. I, I got to help with my daughter real quick. All right. Well, but before we go back to you, Sean, I just want to say uh, I got to throw this in there. Cassie just made some liver pate out of chicken livers. And it, mm -hmm. she spent all day on the, that and chicken chips yesterday, and it was phenomenal. I can't wait for you guys to see this. She showed it to me, and I'm like, well, what is that? She said, well, just taste it. And it was actually, it was like taking a chip and dipping it in a delicious dip. I mean, how often do you get that mm -hmm. on carnivore and everything? It was clean, too. I mean, really clean. Oh, yeah. So be on the lookout for that. I think both of you will eat those chicken nice. livers. No, <laughs> I still want some of that jerk you uh, you talked about incessantly. Well, when you come <laughs> over next week, you can pick some up. We'll have some made. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to it too. All right. Oh, has anyone experienced that metallic taste in your mouth? What about you, Dave? You, do you experience that when you were transitioning over to carnivore? No, I, 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 not from memory. No, I don't think so um larry no no but i i know my 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 breath got kind of nasty um but no mm -hmm. i never i've heard other people say it had yeah, it did but yeah not for me sean i actually did i, I yeah. do remember that time i thought it was so weird you know it was it was odd for me because i had had covid as well i lost all my taste and all my smell for a while for quite a while. I say I had COVID. I didn't have a test, so I don't know if I had it or not. I have what I thought. I don't know. Whatever I had caused me to lose my taste and lose my smell. I wasn't going to the doctor because there wasn't nothing the doctor could do to help me. Yeah. And during that time, like, good gracious. Um, But as far as the metallic taste, I didn't know if it was something to do with what I was experiencing from that or from eating the carnivore. Cause it was right after I started carnivore and everything started clearing up. It wasn't, it wasn't like that for very long, but it was extremely metallic. It was like I was chewing on a 16 penny nail or something, you know? 
Do you have something later? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, my son, he, he had got COVID too when it first broke out. And he, uh, same thing, he had the metallic taste. And then his taste was screwed up for like six months. This is Cody. You know, mm-hmm. Cody's six foot three, he's very slender. But he, yeah. And he, I don't know if his taste is all the way back to 100%. I think it is. Yeah, I haven't heard him talk about it in a while. But what a crazy thing, right? To have your taste mm-hmm. change. You can't taste anything or smell. That's just mm-hmm. nuts. Feel yeah. for you, man. <laughs> yeah, how, how, long, how long did it take to come back, your taste? Man, it was it was a couple months. It was wow. a couple months. It, it was really, it was odd because, like, I didn't get r- really, really sick but I did have some of the weird things happening, like the taste and the right. smell and like things, even though it's back, even now, some things don't taste or smell different. And that there again, I, I don't know whether to contribute that to being, being sick or because now I've eaten carnivore so long that your taste and your smell changes a lot due to that as well. Right. So I, I, you know, I don't know what to base it on, you know, right. I, I just know that it is like, there's certain things that used to smell good to me that, doesn't smell good not not even close and some things that used to smell good that you know i don't know that used to smell bad really don't smell anything to me anymore Hmm. i don't know it's weird but i don't know uh do y'all ever look at your old phones before carnivore phones old photos before carnivore and think how you got there and then use it for more motivation to push you to the next goal you want. <laughs> Absolutely. I do. What about you, Larry? Yeah, but, you know, we've been on YouTube now three years. And I I go back on occasion and I'll watch some of our very first videos. Um, actually, maybe every other week I'll check out a couple just as a reminder. You know, <laughs> I don't ever want to go back to that, man. You know what I mean? Uh, come so far and yeah so it it can definitely you know you got an old photo album or well nowadays it is on your phone you know pull out those pictures and they can definitely motivate you You show yourself how far you've come in whatever amount of time you know even if it's Mm -hmm. 20 30 pounds and you start seeing seeing it in your face you know dave yeah i've got a i've got a lot of video um of when I, you know, me two or three years ago. And, um, yeah, when I, I, I don't intentionally go back and look at it, but when I do notice, when I do see one and I'm just, it's a, it's a good reminder to myself. And I think I cannot go back there. I can't believe that I was like that. And I just thought, Oh, everything's kind of okay. You know, and the pain, is just getting old that's just the way it is you know yeah and so it, i just shake my head and think yeah never again yeah and sean oh man yeah a hundred percent that's one of the that, that touches on an issue you know that i had i had been writing about you know as far as once you get to success man one of the worst things that i think about to stay focused i guess you would say is getting to getting like all that I've accomplished over the last year and a half in every area that I've accomplished it. And then one of the most dangerous things I think we can have happen to us once we get to success is changing up the thing that got us there. You know, obviously lots of things change along that on, along the path to get to success. You know, things the way you start out doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay that way the entire time. Reassessing, you know, making sure that, you know, you're planning correctly and, you know, you're doing what you need to do to get there, finding ways to make things work whenever they stall out, whatever is, is part of the journey. But getting to that successful point, I've seen it so many times. The first thing people do whenever they get successful in this way of eating is start thinking about going back to the stuff that they have worked all this time to get off of and get to the next level. And they've gotten that success. And all of a sudden, you know, now I'm trying to look for ways to step back into the things that, that I used to do. And I mean, everybody's got to make their own judgment on what they want to live with and what they want to do. But it seems to me like that. That's one thing that I fear is that I don't want to I don't want to 
you know, change it up to the point to where I negate what I've done and end up on the same track back to where I was, you know, whatever you do to get successful is what you're going to have to do to stay successful is what I'm saying, I guess is the easiest way to put it, you know? So, you know, if you change your, your, your relationship with food, if you change your relationship in your boundaries and in the way that you deal with yourself, if you get mentally strong in those things, and that's what you use to get you to success and to make you strong and get you healthy, that's going to formulate different habits. You're going to have different dreams. You're going to have different goals you know, than you had previously. And that's how you get to that success, you know. And I don't know, man. It's just something I, I give a lot of thought to, you know. So, yeah, I definitely do to answer his question. Yeah, I definitely go back and, and let those things motivate me and, and drive me and remind me because I definitely don't want to forget what it was like to be where I was because as soon as you start forgetting, you end up back there, right? Mm. Oh, the Buckeye, what's up? How are hey. you? Thanks for the super chat. Two in a row. Organs are for playing, not for eating. <laughs> right? I agree. Oh, oh, there's another one. Sorry, let me grab this one. How do you guys handle burnout on certain types of foods? Ground beef is starting to be repulsive to me. Uh oh, uh oh, these. How, how do you handle the burnout, the wall of doom there? Larry, well, uh, stop eating ground beef. You know, if it's just one particular food, just stop consuming it. Um, it happened with me with eggs. I stopped eating eggs for probably almost six months. I, the thought of them, I just, uh, it, it repulsed me. And uh, yeah, so I just cut them out. And now I eat a ton of them. Uh, I found a couple times I got sick of bacon a little bit, but if you find yourself getting sick of everything, that's the wall of doom. And then I say, just fast, <laughs> you know, don't eat until you're really hungry, until everything looks delicious again, and then dive in with a big smile. Dave? Yeah, I, I would say um, I haven't experienced that, but if I had, yeah, just as Larry said, give it up. Just um, if you don't like ground beef, stop eating ground beef. Um, just replace it with something else, whether it's uh, steaks or whether it's, you know, making hamburger patties out of that ground beef or whether it's, you know, replacing it with another like lamb or fish or something like that for a while. Just give yourself a break. Um It'll come back, you know. I mean, you eat anything, eventually it can probably become boring. But, mm. yeah. Well, and, and that, that's, the, that's the best way, I feel like, to, to work on that addiction that we have to food, right? I mean, until that food looks good again. When you're hungry, anything will work. It will. I promise you. When you're hungry enough and you're starving, that hamburger will look good again. And so that's how to truly listen to your body, to truly understand your body signals is when you're not, when that food doesn't look good, that could be your body saying, Hey, you don't need to eat. You need to just, just take that back seat. And whenever you get hungry enough, it'll look good again. That'd be the best thing I would say to do. Oh, thank you for the super chat. These appreciate you for him. Uh, Maggie says, do any of you dry brine your, 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 I'm saying meat, maybe I, I don't, I haven't, I haven't, I mean, I, I, I will say I bought a whole rib, rib roast and put a little salt on it and stuck it in the, and just would cut the steaks off throughout the week instead of getting them to chop it up. If that's what you're talking about. Um, but if that's not, I have no idea. I haven't, <laughs> but you, Larry, you do any dry brining? Uh, it's buffering is it on me i'm just gonna assume it's on yeah. me i i we've never done that i've never done a dry brine so dave how about you buddy i i just eat ground beef at home so no but um you know if you if you check out the minimalist carnivore channel chad is very big on dry brining so um he's got a lot of stuff on that 
There you go. Joe says, what do y'all think about carb blockers? Carb blockers. Let, uh, me, uh, Dave, sorry. I almost said Kip, but Kip's, so, Kip's MIA. So for, for me, um, I would... So I, I guess it, are we talking about something like, you know, subs or whatever that's always advertised on Facebook? It's like, you know, you can eat all the pizza you want and you just take these <laughs> tablets and it's not going to absorb any of the bad stuff. It's junk, you know, uh, it, it's junk, you know, like uh, even if it works, what are the consequences long term of doing something like that? You know, just stop eating the carbs. Is would be my my response to that kind of stuff, um, Larry. How about you? Uh, I would have the same exact response. So over to you, Sean. Uh, I mean, that's what that's what we call stepping over a hundred to pick up a ten. You know, you step you st- you step over a hundred dollar bill to pick up a ten dollar bill, man. Instead of like that, that's our way though, right? That's that's oftentimes that right there is one of the biggest things that we do is try to find solutions that we can hold on to our addictions with one hand and get our healing with the other hand. You know, when when all we got to do is change our mind, and you can have both, right? Like you can you can have the I say both have have the healing, and you don't have to worry about you know, investing money in something that's really not fixing the problem. It's putting a bandaid on a, on a severed limb. You know, it's not, it's not going to work. You know, it's changing that relationship with food. But, you know, I don't know. I'm with these guys. Just don't eat it. It's the easiest way. It's, it's not easy, but it's the easiest way to deal with the issues that we're having. Oh, see if we got any more questions, man, wherever you guys are, if y'all would just go ahead and take this opportunity to hit that like button and we yeah. sure would appreciate nice that. Like. Oh, Steve said, ask, have I, have I tried the lime Topo Chico? I have bought a couple of those and I always give them to my son. You know, I haven't even, I haven't even tasted the Topo Chico, um, the lime ones yet. I've had the regular ones. I, I'm just weird, man. You never know. It's not that I won't have something that, that has sweeteners or flavor into it, um, but I'm real weird about whether I will or not. You know, it's got to be the right situation, I guess. To answer your question, though, <laughs> do any of you use apps for tracking, tracking, fasting, exercise, mood, etc.? I use zero tracks 168 fast that's the one that i think it was that i was using if i'm not mistaken that's the one where you hit the button and it starts your fast time and you get a green circle um when you complete it i think that's the one that i tried as well what about you dave you, you guys larry y'all trying to y'all use any of the apps um track anything. no and when we have tracked for at certain times on the channel um for certain videos we just use i think it's card manager I believe that's it. And we had, <laughs> I had an account since I did the keto diet, you know, five, six years ago. And, it, it, and that was funny. You know, we were just oh, going to use it for a couple of weeks. And so I reinstalled it and opened my account. And I saw everything I was eating on the carnivore diet and every or on the keto diet and tracking. You know, and this is while I was working at the auto plant. I used to spend so much time meal planning. And I kind of laughed at that, you know, in, in retrospect compared to now where it's just so simple, you know, I mean, I got no problems with keto, but it's so much more complicated than carnivore. Um, but anyway, but yeah, carb manager. <laughs> oh, that's right. Let's see here. I think we got a super chat here. Where'd it go? Thank you all. Fantastic. You're welcome. Appreciate the super chat. Thank you I think very Kip's much back. for that, friend. Is Kip back? Kipper's back. What's up, man? Nice to What's see you. Up? Yeah, I uh, I had to step away because my daughter, she's been Thank sick you. the past couple of days. She's actually got RSV, and so mm. she's been. And so I had to like get her out of the car while I go and get her teddy bear in bed and all this other stuff and get her humidifier going. So I'm back, guys. Y'all better not mess my girl up now. Yeah, oh, Abigail, that's my girl now. That's my buddy. Yeah, well, I hope she gets feeling better, man. I'll be praying for her. Appreciate it. Absolutely. 
Lucha. <laughs> Can't, can't find farm-raised turkey nearby. They shoot a lot of fluid of sickening ingredients into the turkey. Anyone find a healthy turkey? Man, I haven't had turkey in a long time. Um, I did get, I, I got, what was it, some deli turkeys? The last thing that I had just sliced off. What about you guys? You guys know where y'all got fresh turkey around y'all? You know, Cassie, when you're, was it, or a couple of years, got these turkeys from the butcher shop when she was working there. And they were like clean, all natural. And we, both of us didn't like the taste of it. I mean, she cooked it right. It was juicy. But, and the trippy thing was, we were so used to those turkeys they sell in the stores, eating those all our life, that a natural turkey didn't taste good to us. And so, I mean, we just, I mean, Cassie might go out. She might get one again, but these were free. And I, I don't know. It just, it was weird how um, bad they tasted just because we weren't used to them, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so, but I, I like Butterball. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, because the ones at the store, they, uh, they, a lot of times they'll put like all kind of salt and stuff like that in them and, and all kind of stuff before you even get it. So that's why you like that taste so much. But, uh, I mean, do you, Lucia, do you know how to hunt? Uh, do you live anywhere near the woods? That's the, that's the best place you can get them. I know if you got your 12 gauge around here, there's turkeys all over the place. You just got to uh, get out there and work for it. But uh, about an hour away where the butcher shop that I go to, they have some natural turkeys. You might just want to do some research in your area if you're really wanting some, see what you can find. But, um, I mean – You'd probably be fine with the store bought turkeys as well. It just depends on how how strict you want to be. But there's what nowadays in modern society, you can find anything, and it might come with a price. But you can find just about anything online if you're if if you got that kind of money. It just depends on your budget. Mm -hmm. Answer that one for me. Keith. Asked Kip, how do you season your brisket now as opposed to before carnivore? Believe it or not, brisket. I season it pretty similar to the way that I seasoned it before. Sometimes I don't put cayenne pepper on it now, but I mean, to me, brisket is not supposed to be like a super sweet, like, cause brisket's a bad example. Like if you're doing like pork butt and ribs, those I used to season with a lot of sugar and things like that. But brisket is meant to be more savory and like, if you go to tech, a barbecue restaurant in Texas and you get brisket, it's going to have just salt, pepper, and garlic on it, and they might put a little bit of a couple other seasonings or whatever that they won't tell you about, but it's not going to be sugary. It's just it's going to be a savory, beefy flavor because they want the meat to shine. So it hasn't changed much. Salt, pepper, garlic, sometimes a little cayenne or a little jalapeno powder, but it's pretty similar to before. That's what's, up. what's your favorite cut of meat? Are you asking me? Yeah, man. Uh, my favorite cut of meat is, uh, well, since we're talking about brisket, it's kind of like brisket to me. I call it, I call it brisket on a bone, but it's basically uh, beef dino ribs. I love beef dino ribs. They're massive. There's only like three bones in them, and each person can eat like a bone because they're so big. But I just think they're amazing. I like picanha. I like uh, Denver steaks. I like uh, hanger steak. Uh, a lot of other. There's a lot of cuts of beef that are really, really good. Uh, tri tips mm -hmm. really good. But I think uh, beef diner ribs is my favorite. Anybody else, Larry? Uh, favorite cut of meats? I would ooh, like if I had one thing I could have one last time, it would be a, probably a ribeye or a prime rib. Um, there's a lot of other cuts I like, but you know, like my last meal, what do you want? I'd say probably ribeye with lobster tail for carnivore. <laughs> if we were now, if we were talking standard American diet, you know, it might be a couple double doubles from in and out, but <laughs> yeah, right. oh. I hear you. Well, what about you? Uh, what's your favorite cut uh, of meat, Dave? Um, I'm I'm influenced by being in Australia recently, and and, and uh, it's gonna have to be the rump. The rump, yeah. 
Yeah. Rump roast. Yeah. How about you, son? I, yeah, it's it's ribeye for sure. I, I'm I don't know, man. The fillets are so good, but like it's definitely if it were the last meal, it'd, it'd definitely have to be a ribeye again. Y'all gotta for branch sure. out and try some of those other cuts. Like I don't know if y'all have ever had picanha cooked right oh, yeah. or tri tip. Tri tip's yeah. really good too. Um, there's a lot of really good hanger steak. If you know how to cut it, is very very good. Kip. You have one yeah. meal before your last meal on this earth. What would you pick? What is it a is it a carnivore meal or is it both? Just... <laughs> it was both. What would you have? Uh, steak would be included, even if I'm not on carnivore, because I love steak. But uh, I mean, it would. Be, I would probably have a like a piece of cheesecake on bottom with a ribeye on top of it, Jeez. and and you then some shrimp on top of that. And it would just be like a dessert and uh, and and a ribeye at the same time. Oh, ribeye. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. cool. My dude in this cheesecake. All right. Cheesecake. I love cheesecake. You oh, yeah. make my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, uh, did you and Cassie notice more cravings after your long fast? Yeah, Lynn, absolutely. I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and we weren't just craving like, you know, carnivore food. We were craving everything. Expect fast food for me. I, oh, that's when the McDonald's and the Taco Bell and everything is looking fantastic. Cassie, it was sweet. You know, she was craving cakes, uh, carnivore kips, cheesecake. She was craving it all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for sure. There was a huge rebound effect with our cravings. And, um, yeah, I always warn people now, this is what happened to us, both of us. So you might want to consider that if, you know, you're going to try and do a crazy long fast. So, Oh man. Victory says I'm in my fourth month carnivore. I just realized just recently started seeing eye floaters. My eye doctor said they will go away, but they are not. And they are making me crazy. I'm 23 advice. Well, if your doctor said they're going to go away, I don't know what in the world I could say is going to be any better, to be honest with you. Uh, first of all, eat carnivore. It's going to give you the best nutrition that your body can handle that it needs to to give your body the nutrients to perform optimally. Outside of that, like, I mean, in all honesty, your your eye doctor probably knows more about your eyes than, than I will be able to tell you. You know, I've, I've heard of people talking about their floaters getting better, and, and obviously I just – talked about my eyes getting better on eating carnivore i in the grand scheme of things i've only been doing it 580 something days or something like that since april the 17th of 2022 so in a year and a half a little over a year and a half my eyes have gotten better my type 2 diabetes non-alcoholic fatty liver sleep apnea all five different medications all my labs are within normal range um you know that just tells me not just one area, but multiple areas. Um, and obviously depression, which is the best thing this this going. I, so my, my best advice, eat carnivore. Give your body the nutrition it needs to heal. What yeah, you got, I'd, like, I'd like to say thank you for watching uh, wherever you're watching from because you're only 23 years old. That's a, that's a young uh, person for, our, <laughs> yeah, isn't it, guys? I mean, our demographic's yeah. usually a little older than that. Mm -hmm. So welcome. Yeah. And I want to say that, I'm almost, I'll be 50 years old uh, next year. As you go through life, your body, as far as me, my body did different things at different times. Like, whoa, you know, got a little twitch in your eyelid for a couple months, you know, but it seems like your body goes through little changes like that, but they, then they disappear and you forget about them. You know, I'm just maybe uh, <laughs> some advice from an old guy. You know, your, body, your, your, body, your body does weird things as, as you, you go through life. So. Just, just to add to that, um, you know, I was about 22 when I first noted fl noticed floaters in my eyes. Um, it's on a long drive, and I'm like, suddenly, what's that I can see, you know? And um, that that just persisted, and it, it's it, it's improved over time. Okay, but so it's of course carnivore will give you the most nutrition, but uh, you know they yeah. they'll come and go. What exactly are eye floaters? Is that where you see little things floating around? Mm -hmm. Like in your vision? 
Oh, okay. So it's I think it's proteins in your eye floating around, and yeah, it's just like little shadowy outlines. And right. Things. Yeah. Right. I I've actually seen those before. Okay. Mm. And I wasn't drunk. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's muted. Yeah, uh, I see that. It's my, I, I thought he was notable. talking to somebody else. <laughs> it's most noticeable and noticeable when you're like looking into a bright image or something or you're looking at you're driving so you're looking through the bright windscreen or something like that right mm. absolutely let's see oh yeah we're at almost an hour and a half i'm gonna wrap this thing up pretty soon we'll go see there's a few more though how how much how many electrolytes do you, drops do you take per day thanks um i know you guys do the elements still right larry y'all take it we take what one pack a day two packs something like that were you you were buffering, Sean? I, I don't know. The the element. Do, how much element do you guys take? Oh, we take either one packet a day if we're exercising or fasting. We'll take two. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's all I can give you there. Um, earlier in our journey, we did use drops, and we kind of gauge it to just how salty it tasted. But um, maybe some of the other guys. It's been a while since I've used those. So, Dave, you got anything on that? Um, I don't, I don't do anything. I just, I just liberally salt everything. That's, right. that's about it with pink, uh, pink salt. Kip? Uh, I mean, I have some element electrolytes, but honestly, sometimes I forget to take them. Like I just, I have a hard time remembering to tie my shoes if my wife don't tell me. So <laughs> like, I just forget to forget to take them sometimes, but I try to take them. And whenever I do take it, I'll, I mean, I'll do like a half a pack in the morning and then a half a pack in the evening because I don't like a whole pack at one time. Maybe if I had like a big, big water jug. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's about how much I take. I take yeah, probably two. Like I'll, I'll fill this or my other little uh, container thing up with a cap full of daily minerals from keto chow daily minerals and that's usually about every day what i'll do at least once but other than that and it, and it works the best i need it to so but if i have cramps i'll add until i don't have any more cramps and have to worry about it because them things are horrible <laughs> day these one more any thoughts on coconut oil i understand it's not carny but i like the taste and quick fat boost very low linoleic acid concerns. I mean, if if that's what works for you, I mean, it's not ideal, but if that's what gets you through, I mean, I like bacon grease or, or something like that. Butter is what we use. Um, as far as my thoughts on it, I just I just think there's better options that that I could go for, and that's usually what I learn to learn to deal with. But if that's what you like, I mean, it, it's on you. What about you guys? You got anything for that as far as the coconut oil? I use, um, we use, oh, sorry, uh, Dave. Go ahead. Go ahead, Larry. All right. I We use coconut oil when we were on keto, and I, I never had, like, any adverse reactions to it or anything. And you Yeah. Know, but, technically, you know, I don't use it anymore um, because I don't really have a problem getting fats in now. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what I got for you. Dave? Um. I did use it as well um, when I first started keto, but I, I quickly went off it because I didn't like all my food tasting like the beach. So um, <laughs> yeah, I quickly I quickly went to olive oil before I before I ended up with beef tallow. Uh, Kip, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on if the person is trying to be keto or they're trying to be carnivore. If you're if you're if you're doing carnivore, then you're not having coconut oil as like as your main oil but i mean if you're keto then that's that's fine if that's what you want to do whenever i did uh uh whenever i was first started doing keto i used to do coconut oil but i also tried avocado oil and i actually mm. liked the taste of avocado oil better than coconut oil so i used to use that a lot instead mm. of coconut oil but i mean it's just what you what you want to do or like are you keto or are you carnivore i mean that, that that's a personal choice i think like dr barry says i think it's all part of the spectrum of proper human diet so that that's 
kind of up to you in my opinion. I concur. I concur. And we'll end up right here. Do you guys think the carnivore movement will expand exponentially next year? What do you guys think? We'll start with you, Larry. What you think, man? Uh, that's really hard to say. You know, I, I, I think it will. I think more and more people uh, will come to it. But, uh, you know, how how is it going to get squashed by the powers that be? You know, I'm still waiting to see. There's been a little bit of censorship here and there, but I think a lot of people have blown that up to be bigger than it is. But we'll see. You know, I hope so. You know, it'd be great if we lived in a country that served re or countries that served all real food and, you know, wasn't poisoning their population. You know, that'd be pretty <laughs> cool, right? So, right. Uh, Dave, any thoughts? Um. I I'm positive about it, um, mainly because it seems to have expanded in in the just over a year I've been involved. It seems to have expanded a lot, so I'm I'm positive. But yeah, I just to echo your comments, Larry. I uh, I kind of um, I hope we can get to a place where you know at at least. Uh, because we want to talk about a diet that's not, um, you know, the mainstream way of eating currently, um, we're not censored or we're not classed as misinformation or something like that. I mean, we're just talking about what we're doing and what works for us, you know? So um, I, I, I certainly hope that improves. And Kip, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I would say that um, the results that we're all getting is going to speak for itself and it's going to speak loud enough that, you know, people are going to notice more and more people are going to notice. Like there's more people that are carnivore now than there was last year. Like you said, uh, Dave, and there's no way that those results are going to be denied. Like that people are going to, there's people that are going to be hungry for that. People are going to be hungry to feel healthy and to get healthier and to reverse diabetes and to do all these different things. And their eyesight might get better. I'm not saying that everybody's eyesight is going to get better, but people are going to be looking for stuff like that. And this is, I don't think this is just a fad. I think that this is something that's actually going to help a lot of people. But there's always going to be tons of, there's always going to be pushback. There's always going to be other different diet options or whatever out there but i i think carnivore is here to stay and i think it's going to grow because it's not like one of those diets where people do it and you know they get like some six week results and then all of a sudden it just fizzled <laughs> out you got people that are doing this for for long term and like having their lives changed for and and you know people are going to want that so that's what i'd say about it I agree. I think it's going to grow. I will. I mean, I think, I think it, it just, when, as long as there's people who are living in a hopeless situation with their health and there's people who have found the answer to fix those same issues and they're willing to tell other people about it, I think it'll, it'll spread. And that's the whole reason about why we're doing what we're doing here. You know, we like hanging out. We like hanging out together. You know, it, the whole YouTube thing is fun, but don't mistake the purpose of all this. The purpose of all this is because there was a couple of four guys in particular who was at a point in their life where they couldn't see any way out, who found an answer, who had been changed by that answer to a point that we feel a responsibility and an obligation to share what we've learned with other people, you know? You can go around to these guys right here and, and based on the time that like I know about Larry the most, you know, and 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 I'm sure Dave and, and Kip can attest to the same. When you get down to like hourly salary for what you put into YouTube and put into the the behind the scenes working on things when it comes to this stuff, it's cents on the hour. Cents. Like it's, it's just insane. So it, there's a purpose for why we're doing it. And it's not because it's been monetarily beneficial. 
um, it's because our hearts go out to people who are suffering the way that we were suffering. And I could not lay my head down if I took all the information that I've gained and just sat on it. So, you know, I think that's a, a big deal. What about you, Larry? What do you think? Well, I, I, we started our channel, you know, we were very obese and I, I just wanted to be a famous fat guy. <laughs> that's all i wanted yeah. you know and then we started eating the carnivore diet and i started losing weight and i was like wow maybe, maybe this could help some people on that <laughs> start out i just wanted to be a famous guy that everybody you know all the comments read oh what are you doing on youtube you're fat you got a diet channel you blubber butt what are you doing boy? <laughs> you know and it was uh no i'm kidding but our channel started with accountability for us and, you know, it turned into so much more as we developed a relationship with our audience, uh, fellow YouTubers and, you know, the community in general. And, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> but yeah, f famous fat guy. That's what I want. Dave. That's right. <laughs> and now you got to settle for famous skinny guy, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> No, How blessed! Never, I'll never be famous, and I'm not skinny yet. I'm getting there. Well, you're so. already famous, but you get you're getting to the skinny part. You got that. Yeah. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who obtains discernment? That's why I think it's going to grow because I feel people are 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 understanding the truth, and when you understand the truth and you gain wisdom you are blessed in every area of your life. And I feel like that's what people who come to this way of eating, that's what I could testify to. Not only did it help my health, did it help my mind, did it help all these other issues, but as time goes on, it, it, it is the video like me and Dave did this past week. You know, it, it rolls over off onto other areas of your life in ways that you never knew was possible. You didn't even realize you needed some of the things that, that's happening to you. So, if you're out there and you're hopeless and you haven't, you know, you've run out of options, you've run out of, of ideas and you haven't tried carnivore, what are you waiting for? Today could be the day, you know, it could change your life. And a year from now, you could be sitting where I'm sitting saying a similar, you know, story of how, you know, you tried all these different things. And one day you were sitting around on a Friday night, listening to these crazy four dudes from all over the world, <laughs> you know, talking, you know, talking about what helped them find health, optimal, you know, nutrition and really impact their life in such a way that gives them a purpose to reach outside and, and help others and, and the potential to do other great things, you know, because I feel like that's exactly what it does. Because once you find success in one area, you you can just about replicate that in other areas of your life. And I th feel like it helps in, in so many different ways. But listen, we're at an hour and 40 minutes almost. And like time gets away, we have so much fun. I do want to say uh, that it's been no different tonight. It's been amazing, which I knew it would be. Thanks, Steve, for the super chat. Appreciate that, my friend. Hope yeah. all's well, well for you, brother. Um, you guys got anything else you want to say before we wrap it up tonight? Start with you, Kip. I was just going to say, Sean, come on now, be for real. You know that, uh, we, uh, we're all, as soon as we get done, uh, with these live streams, we're driving our Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all that <laughs> stuff. I think that that's what some subscribers think that, uh, or people that watch the video <laughs> think that like we're doing this to drive lamborghinis and i'm like dude i'll be honest i drive a honda accord okay like it's not i'm not on here i'm not spending my friday evening on here thinking that like i'm gonna <laughs> get loaded with money like i'm spending my friday evening on here with y'all because i actually want to try to help somebody that's in the same situation i was in nine months ago because nine months ago i felt hopeless like you talk about sean and i felt like there was nothing that I was going to be able to do to get out of the situation that I was in. And I kept spinning in circles, trying different diets. And I kept, even with keto, like I love keto and got respect for keto, but I kept falling for the keto treats, the keto snacks. And that junk got old. It got old of going around and around in circles. And carnivore made all that stuff simpler. It was like, eat the meat, 
and stay away from all the other stuff and you'll be fine. And it, it, I don't have to track anything. I don't have to, none of that stuff. And, you know, so I'm thankful to be on this journey now and no, we're not driving Ferraris. I mean, maybe one day you never know what might happen, but I know that's not the reason that us four are here tonight because I mean, it ain't like that for real, but a lot of people do think that. But for those of y'all that tuned in tonight, I love all y'all, and I love all four of you guys. What you got, Dave? What you want to tell us? Okay, so yours is a Honda Accord? It's a Honda I, Accord. I, I don't even have a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's great spending time with you guys, and it, it's, it's awesome having everyone tune in and uh, – chat around and ask questions and it's it's wonderful spending time with you all and uh this is also the highlight of my week i love it and uh yeah thank you thank you all looking forward to the next one larry uh yes sir as always this was a blast everybody appreciate you guys watching wherever you're watching from and uh i'm looking forward to next week already so thank you guys very much sean absolutely same thing love you guys appreciate you guys thank you guys for tuning in like like this like the video wherever you're you're watching it from like i said if you haven't already hit that subscribe button so and hit notification bell so that you'll be notified each time we put some content out we appreciate you guys from the donations the super chats to the likes to the comments to the support in the community being here every week um it it means the world to us and we appreciate you guys very much and look forward to next week as well until then you guys stay strong and keep pushing forward and we'll see you then say up